thank everybody for being here today for this announcement. I particularly want to thank some of my fellow public officials for being here. Uh, Mayor Mike Rawlings of Dallas and Mayor P Betsy Price from Fort Worth, uh, as well as uh, Mayor Pro Tem Wowman from Arlington and uh, Mayor Pro Tem Atkins also from, from Dallas. We are excited by this announcement and I want to frame up what we're going to be talking about here today. Picture yourself in say 19 or 919. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> Different, century. wrong century. 2021. 20, Picture yourself. Boy, I just blew that one completely. <laughs> Picture yourself in 2021 making the decision as how best to get from Houston to the DFW area and having choices. You could take your personal vehicle, you could jump on a plane, airport to airport, or you could jump on a high speed train that could get you there in 90 minutes. Now there are a lot of steps to go through to get from here to 2021 and the possibility of that being available. And we're here today to uh, announce the next phase of this discussion. Texas Central Railroad has been talking to public officials on the proposed corridor, they have been talking to the state of Texas, they've been having stakeholder meetings for about three years now, and much of that has been under the radar. What's about to happen, as I said, the next phase is that we're moving from the general discussions to the formal EIS process, and uh, with the Federal Railroad Administration, the formal safety standards process. So it's about to become much more public and much more visible. As you know, many countries already have high, highly developed high-speed rail uh, systems that connect major cities. I have ridden high-speed rail in China, but uh, it's common across Europe, France, Italy, Germany, uh, Taiwan, South Korea, Spain. Now it's our turn to explore whether we can productively develop a high-speed rail system and why not do it in the best state in the United States, a state that is willing and has always been willing to take big steps forward when, there's, when no one else is willing to do the big, bold project. When you look at Texas, according to a study from the New York University Wagner School of Public Service, there are currently more than 50,000 super commuters who travel between Houston and Dallas more than once a week. There's your initial ridership base. If you're commuting once a week from Houston to Dallas, wouldn't you rather be able to jump on a train, work on something else while you're making that commute? But it doesn't just stop there. Uh, we all know that there's a tremendous amount of traffic along that corridor. With increased density, increased traffic, uh, travel time by car between, uh, certainly between Houston and Dallas and then farther on to Fort Worth, you may be talking about six and a half hours to make that trip. And so as we move into the future, the economics, for a lot of reasons, become much more visible to those of us who have been watching this process. Now, in order for this to happen, as I indicated, there are a lot of additional steps. I'm here with the mayors of, of Dallas and Fort Worth, and they've agreed to be here with me because we believe that high-speed rail connection is important to our metro areas. This is not intended to be in competition with any other mode of transportation, and it is not intended to compete for uh, scarce transportation dollars here in the state of Texas because of one very important fact. The Texas Central Railroad has, throughout these conversations, committed that this would be a privately funded, market-led effort. 
and I want to repeat that, privately funded, market-led effort. Our job as public officials is to make sure that when they get to our cities, that we, need to, that we do what we can throughout the regulatory process to help make sure that they have the right entry point into our cities and that we make smooth connections for the people who are traveling. Uh, I'm excited about the possibilities and we hope that you will help us raise awareness of not just the possibilities but the practicalities needed to move forward. And as this becomes in the next month a much more visible public process, let's continue to engage the citizens of the state of Texas in creating another transportation mechanism that can benefit the entire state and most importantly, the two most economically powerful metro regions in the state of Texas.